You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's seven you may on Twitter, the gaming drag today. I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Cilio Ties Path. So y'all, before we jump into it, just wanted to let y'all know that our Patreon is now up for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel and get some awesome rewards, such as permanent access to our community Discord server and full access to upcoming Not Safe for Work videos, a little teaser of which I posted to Twitter. Anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm chain, you were up. Let's go. Alrighty. Ah, yes, Jay, the gayest dragon imaginable. Ah, uh, the pleasure is all mine, I assure you. Now, I shall not intrude. I will return with your meals as soon as they're ready. Thank you. Jay quickly departed, running our orders to the kitchen. Well, uh, he's intense. Indeed. I suspect that is good for business, although I feel compelled to ask. You seemed a little disappointed placing your order. Oh, I was just, uh, reminiscing. I see. I would be delighted if you would like to share. Well, you see, when Diego and I went to university, there was this one place we ate breakfast at a whole lot. They sold buttermilk They sold buttermilk pancakes with vanilla ice cream and passion fruit syrup, and that was, like, our favorite. Vanilla ice cream and passion fruit syrup? I concede that is not a combination I've seen sold before, but it does sound most appealing. I take it you were disappointed the cafe did not sell such a thing. Yep, pretty much. Hmm. Ty scratched his chin deep in thought but said no more. Clearly committing this preference to memory for use at a later time. So, um... Yes? Are... is this... Are you nervous? Oh, um, a little. My, mind. you seemed so confident last night. If I'm honest, I didn't expect any of this to happen quite so quickly. It's been on my mind a lot this morning. I guess I've kind of gotten myself a little worked up. Uh, but let us not get ahead of ourselves, hmm? We are just work colleagues here on business. It just so happens we are getting to know one another a little better in the process. Am I right? Oh, uh... Think of it... Think of this what you may. But I assure you there is no need to be nervous. I am quite happy for your company and have no personal expectations for this outing. I just hope to make you feel at ease. I appreciate it. Oh, yeah, I've been meaning to ask. What are the Black Claws? Well, believe it or not, I used to play in a moderately successful band. That was a good few years back now, mind you. Oh yeah, Lucas mentioned that. You were the singer, right? Well, sort of. I was the guitarist originally, but added backing vocals here and there. Eventually I wound up being the de facto frontman, a fact which drew ire from the actual one. That sounds like a story. Care to tell it? I see no reason not to. We have time to kill while we wait for our meal after all. So the story begins. Goodness, it must have been two decades or so back. Lucas and I were leaving our teens behind, grappling with the harsh realities of adult life and writing songs documenting the experience. Wow, the two of you were friends that long ago? Indeed, ever since childhood. Heh, <laughs> was he always such a sourpuss? On the surface, almost always. Deep down, however, he is not as cold as he might seem. The two of us played together often, but never took our music seriously at the time. It was a hobby, you see, and was not intended to pay the bills. Before long, however, we would both become disillusioned with our career prospects. Woodcrest was different in those days. Between us, we decided to pursue our musical dreams and fill out our ranks. At the time, I lacked confidence and skill as a vocalist, so another was sought alongside a bassist. Within a couple of weeks, we had found a, mem we had found a number of promising applicants, but one in particular stood out. His name was Glenn, and he could, play both he could play bass and sing all the while. Not to mention he was quite good at both. I'm curious, what kind of band were you? Like, what genre? At that stage in our career, punk, hard rock, you know, the typical anti-establishment stick. Whoa, what? You? Does the leather jacket not give it away? I will have you know I am quite the punk when I care to be. Heh, <laughs> I bet. Still, it's just so unexpected, and it work you're so fancy. Hell, even here and now, the way you speak is all fancy. I do run a high-end bar, after all, but that is not the entire story. In truth, I owe a lot of that to, um, a former friend. Compared to him, I am a borderline simpleton, but I do try to keep pace. Oh, really? Former friend? What happened? That is a sore topic, I'm afraid. Perhaps one day, but that day is not today. Oh, sorry, I didn't know. Oh, it is quite alright. Anyway, shall I continue with my story? Yes, please, sorry for the interruption. So we named our band the Black Claws and began playing local shows. We saw modest success, enough for us to play shows in neighboring towns like Somervale. We eventually released our first album, which sold acceptably. We were hardly living in the lap of luxury, it was paycheck to paycheck, cup ramen and fresh air. 
Although, in hindsight, if he had not been spending such a pretty penny on alcohol... Second, y'all. Water time. Lucas and I had grown disillusioned with it all. Truth be told, we had planned to quit, but in the end, we chose not to. Why was that? Glenn is known for many things, his temper being a major one. We were in the studio laying down tracks for the album when he got into a fight with the engineer. He left the studio and Lucas and I sent the poor engineer home. It was just the two of us, and there was not a whole lot we could do without either of them. But rather than waste expensive studio time, Lucas and I, were, Lucas and I jammed a popular mainstream rocks rock cover on a whim while the tapes were rolling. I even sang the vocal parts, a performance that earned me Lucas's praise, although I did not rightly believe him. He told management. Management Management showed the label. Next thing you know, the very recording he the very recording we had made was a bonus track on the record. Interestingly, but perhaps not surprisingly, Glenn refused to have anything to do with it. Our producer performed the bass parts instead and had me overdub my own backing vocals. Before that point, the three of us in the band got on reasonably. During the early days, Glenn and I got along well, but over time, the two of us would grow apart. Lucas never rightly saw eye to eye with Glenn, but he managed to keep things mostly civil. Then, the album released. Our cover, despite not being a single, garnered substantial radio play in very short order. Before we knew it, there was a music video, several sponsorship deals and promos, you name it. We even charted all over the world. Number one in Ortega. Suffice it to say, Glenn was not entitled to royalties on this track due to his refusal to take part. We had not expected the song to take off, but had but had we known, we surely would have negotiated otherwise. Why? He didn't do anything. He didn't do any of the work. You are quite right, but he did make our lives a living hell from that point forward. That marked the beginning of a long feud between us, and his problem was most specifically with me. He felt as though I had stolen his place, pushed him into the background, sold us all out. Things only got worse on our third album. Glenn was supposed Glenn was opposed to using the same producer. However, our manager was insistent. As it would happen, both the producer and our manager saw dollar signs and wanted to repeat history. Our third album was roughly half and half with Glenn seeking an even share of the leads. The distinctive sound of our earlier work was largely absent, instead replaced by a catchier post-punk sound with a, more, with a certain mainstream appeal. Worse yet, while our third album was a fan favorite, it never quite caught on like our label had been banking on. The money started to dry up, and between that and Glenn's shifting role in the band, Things had grown tense. About six months after our third album launched, we performed a show at a, venue, at a venue in Woodcrest. It was the only decent venue in town, holding a population of 150. While we could sell out here in Woodcrest, our shows elsewhere saw dwindling numbers. The label had somewhat lost faith in us, their support tapering off as our phone calls were sent to voicemail. And the cherry on the cake? The dark room had just been made bankrupt. The one venue we could fill was going the way of the dodo. We had the honor of playing the very last show. It was a strange feeling. The typical management was not present, instead replaced by lawyers and creditors, overseeing proceedings in person. The soon-to-be unemployed staff all bared brave but yet melancholy grins. They had already been begun, begun stripping the venue of anything valuable. As I understand, our show only went ahead due to contractual obligations and red tape. It was easier for us to play the show and get things over with than the alternative. Once we had finished the show, we went backstage. Between losing our best venue and the tensions between Glenn and me, things erupted. One second, y'all. Water time. Alrighty. Glenn would walk that very night, and between Lucas and me, we would agree that to dissolve the band. This was about three years ago. We had been playing together for a decade and a half, and just like that, it was over. I had been saving up money from album sale royalties and shows for a long time, and I heard through the grapevine that the Dark Room's creditors were very keen to offload the property in a hurry. I paid more for the subsequent renovations than I did for the property. I had originally planned to establish a rebooted version of the Dark Room. Alas, I very quickly understood why the Dark Room had collapsed in the first place. And so, plans changed. And now, I run a high-end bar. Wow, what a story! Sounds like things turned out okay in the end. So you'd never miss playing music? Sometimes, financially things were tight. Even towards the end there, how I managed to not how I managed to scrape enough together for my deposit, I do not know. I do not miss the financial uncertainty, but I do miss playing at least sometimes. It feels like a lifetime ago I last performed. My only reminder of that life being the occasional royalty check, several guitars that I rarely have time to play, and well, this jacket. 
Like I said, a remnant of yesteryear. I saw it saw much use back in those days. What's to stop you from playing for fun? Maybe you and Lucas could get together again and jam like old times. I do not know if he would be on board, if I am honest. His business is doing reasonably well, and he does not know, and he does not have a lot of free time on his hands. Truth be told, the same is true for myself as well. And do not forget there are no dedicated venues left either. Even if he did agree, where could we play? Some of the many more extravagant renovations make the bar a poor fit for a live music venue. I was literally building a concert stage for Lucas yesterday. What do you call that, huh? The community call the community hall with some stage lights. I cannot imagine the acoustics are anything more than horrific. Pah, acoustics. Who cares if you're having fun? Lucas, who cares if you're having fun? Look, you and Lucas could perform the band, could be free from the band and play occasional shows just for the kicks. <laughs> I appreciate your optimistic enthusiasm. Even if Lucas were on board, I somehow doubt Glenn would be. Although, in the case of the latter point, that is probably for the best. Then why not replace him? Know any good bass, pl bass players? Alas, I do not. I concede it is an intriguing thought, but sometimes it is better to leave your past exactly where you left it. In the past. No need to dig up old memories and the dreams of yesteryear. Always good to meet a fan, he says, while the well, he says all the while wearing the very same jacket he used to perform in. What? Ty sighed and as a gentle smile crossed his lips. His expression was one of concession, proving my suspicion beyond any doubt. I suppose you make a good point. I experienced fleeting moments of nostalgia just as quickly shot down by my own better memories of the realities of such a lifestyle. That's why you forget about big tours and selling out shows. You do it for the thrill of it, for the love of playing music. You do it as a hobby and only as a hobby. Both Lucas and I spent years trying to do that, but it was too late. We had already grown far beyond that point. And Glenn? It was not just a career to him. It was his whole life. Nothing else mattered to him. But I know what you were going to say. Do it without him, right? And, well... We still have fans, if our lovely waiter is anything to go by, but maybe, just maybe, enough time has passed that it being a hobby is once again feasible. That's the spirit! You better remember You better remember to invite me to your shows! <laughs> the support is appreciated, but I have no desire to go it alone. I make no promise, but I will consider asking Lucas to join me. That's all I ask. Gentlemen. Our waiter had returned, a large plate of pancakes in each hand. He passed the plate with an overwhelming amount of syrup my way before handing Ty his own plate. Delicious meals for two delicious gentlemen. I hope you enjoy. Why, thank you, Jay. That is most appreciated. I do hope they are up to standard. I would loathe to ruin your date. Oh. We're, um... Please, the way you were looking at him as he told his story... Yeah, I was listening. You practically had stars in your eyes. I felt my face flush red with embarrassment. Ty chuckled in response. Second, y'all. Water time. Alright. Now, look what you have done. You've made my guests uncomfortable. I do apologize. As adorable as this scene is, I shall take my leave. Please, enjoy your meals. And I hope to see you both soon. And with that, Jay pranced away with a distinct spring in his step, clearly having enjoyed what he, what he had witnessed. Tense indeed. Looks as though you had he looks as though he had you pegged as well. I'm not doing a good job of being subtle here, am I? So far I've only managed to fool Diego. Diego is smarter than he looks. I doubt he will remain fooled for long. True, but I guess I just didn't want to jump the gun. That is quite a sensible mindset. I applaud it. Although if your concern relates to my interest, I would not be worried. Good to know. My phone was ringing. I reached down into my pocket, grabbed it, and checked the caller ID. Huh, it's Axel. Mind if I take this? Go right ahead. Hello? Hey, Hunter. Had a busy day? Not particularly. Just had second breakfast at the new cafe in town. Ooh, excuse me. Second breakfast? Wow, you must have been hungry. Well, I suppose it's sort of lunchtime now anyway. What about you? I bought a fridge. A, a fridge? Yeah. Have you and Dom found a place to live already? Well, no, not yet, but the one I've got here belongs to the landlord and the seals are all broken. It, so it's costing me heaps in power. Dom's only got a really small one, so I decided to get a bigger one we could both use. Aren't you thoughtful? Heh, <laughs> I don't know about that, but anyway, about why I called, I went for a really nice model, but I ran out of cash for delivery. You know I don't have a car or anything, right? Oh, that's not a problem. The store is literally around the corner from my apartment. I've got it, I've got it to the steps, but it, I'm not strong enough to get it up. Get it up? 
I see, I see, I see. You need a big strong man to come and pay you a visit then. <laughs> Alright guys and gals, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out that Patreon if you can. Anyway, I love you all. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye